Well, now to our guest, Hurt Wilders is the Dutch anti-immigration and anti-Islam MP. He's the founder of the right-wing Party for Freedom. Next week, Hurt Wilders arrives in Australia for a visit that's been a long time in the making. He'd planned to come here about a year ago and drew early support from Liberal Senator Cory Bernardi, who later distanced himself from the idea. Now he's being sponsored by the anti-Islamic group the Q Society on a road trip that's sure to fire debate over what constitutes free speech or hate speech. Kurt Wilders joins us now live from The Hague. Thanks for being there. Well, thanks for having me uh, on your show tonight. Um, are you on some sort of global jihad against Islam? Well, indeed, um, I'm well more on a global jihad um, to preserve um, our freedom. I believe that even though I have nothing against uh, the people or Muslims or anybody uh, uh, for that reason, I believe that Islam and freedom are incompatible. And I believe that uh, the mistakes that we made in Europe in the last decades by allowing so much mass immigration from Islamic countries uh, is a warning uh, that um, if Australia is not vigilant enough to preserve their freedom, what, might, what has happened here might happen to Australia in the next decades as well. So, very precisely, you plan to warn Australian audiences of what you see as the danger of Islamic <coughs> migration, is that correct? Well, yeah, I believe that, once again, Islam and freedom are incompatible. Islam is, according to me and my party, not so much a religion as well as it is a totalitarian ideology. In Islam, there is not much room for anything else but Islam. Look how in uh, societies today where Islam is dominant and prominent, how uh, any non-Islamic uh, person, whether it's a Christian or an apostate uh, or a, a woman or a critical journalist, how they are treated. Uh, this is in a very bad way, often with the death penalty or imprisonment or, or, or all those kind of terrible things. And I believe that with the mass immigration to our free societies, our societies will change and it will change for the worst. And um, I'm proud to say, and you, don't, you are not a racist or a bigot or anything like that, if you say that um, the Netherlands, as Australia, is a culture uh, based on Christianity, on Judaism, on humanism, and it's certainly not, nor should it ever um, will be, come, a society based on Islamic values. We should fight it, uh, we should stop it, and uh, we should be proud on who we are and define what we are not. I'm going to pick you up on some of those points in a little while, but uh, what do you actually know about the <coughs> Islamic community in Australia? What have you heard about what is happening here and Australian multiculturalism, which it seems to me could be quite different to multiculturalism in Holland. Of course that's the case. I'm not saying that it's exactly uh, the same. I know, and I also spoke in the United States of America and in Canada and other countries where they have um, uh, good results with uh, immigration, that it cannot be compared um, everything to uh, Europe. But I know that where we uh, today in Europe have an enormous influx of um, um, in the last decades of people from um, Islamic countries that our society has changed, that it has worsened for that reason, that unfortunately non-Western immigrants, often Muslims, are overrepresented in statistics of crime, of dependency on social benefits, that we have honor killings, that we have genital mutilation, that we have streets where women with headscarves and burqas are uh, not the exception anymore, and that it, it's, it, it's getting worse. And what I'm trying to do when I visit your beautiful country, Australia, is warn Australians that even though it might not be the case today, learn from the mistakes that we made in Europe, be vigilant and look uh, at Islam for what it really is. Islam is not a religion of peace. Islam is a totalitarian ideology. The best example is that if any person, any Muslim, wants to leave Islam, then the penalty is death. It is not even allowed to leave it. And that's why I believe Islam should not so be, much, uh, com be compared with other religions like Christianity or Judaism, but Islam should be compared to other totalitarian ideologies like communism or fascism. Well, I mean, I can tell you for sure that uh, there are plenty of Islamic people in Australia who've left the religion without being killed. So what you're saying can't be true everywhere. Sure. Indeed, I suspect what you're really talking about is Islamic fundamentalism. Why not restrict your arguments to Islamic fundamentalism or radical Islam, Islamism? 
I mean, why do you include in this broad brush moderate no. Islam? Sorry, um, I lose you here for a minute, but um, okay. I think you asked for me. You asked yes, me why, why I, I said why, why, I did why, not, um, why, why don't you exclude from your your annoyance, your anger, moderate Islam, yes. which is very different to what you well, seem to be describing. It's not. Yeah. Well, it's not annoyance or anger, it's just the truth. And what you're saying about radical Islam, with all respect to you, sir, is complete nonsense. There is no radical or moderate Islam. There is only one Islam, and that is the Islam from um, the Quran, uh, the holy book. That is the Islam uh, from Muhammad. There are no two sorts of Islam. However, there are moderate and non-moderate Muslims. I acknowledge that. As a matter of fact, the majority of the Muslims living in our society are moderate people. But don't make the mistake that even though there are moderate and radical um, uh, Muslims, that there is a moderate or a radical Islam. There is only one Islam, and that is a totalitarian ideology that has no room for anything but Islam. And you see it once again in any country in the world where Islam is dominant. How well, okay, can I, can I, can I, sorry, can we, I just, can instance, I, sorry, can I just interrupt you there because it just happens sure. we live very close to the largest Islamic country in the world, Indonesia, which has 250 million people um, and has recently transitioned to democracy. According to you, that's impossible for an Islamic country to do. Yes, they have a problem with radical Islam. It is a small problem relative to the whole population. How do you think we should deal with Indonesia? Do you think we should treat them as if they are somehow insane? Now, once again, um, you misunderstand um, my point entirely. I'm not talking about the people. I have nothing against the people. I have nothing against the Indonesian people or the Arab people or the Muslim people. I'm talking about the ideology. And indeed, as long as a country has a, a culture where, or a religion, an ideology where Islam is dominant, it will never be a democracy. It's not, it's also happening in Indonesia. Look at how they treat Christians in Indonesia or um, how they treat Christians in any other country um, where Islam is dominant. Why is it not possible to build a church in Saudi Arabia, whereas we in the Netherlands have almost 500 mosques being built? Why is it not possible to buy or sell a Bible in any Muslim or most of the Muslim countries, whereas we can buy a Quran here on every street corner? This is the exact example of the fact that Islam is an intolerant society, and I believe that. Well, can um, I? Sorry, can I just? I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I'm going to have to. I beg to your be pardon. I, I'm going to have to interrupt you on that point as well, because sure. in fact, one of your own ideas is to ban the Quran in the Netherlands. So um, <clears throat> apparently, you're as intolerant as you believe well, the other side. Well, no, I made a point in the Dutch Parliament. Unfortunately, you are wrong here as well. I made a point in the Dutch uh, Parliament that if, where in Holland, you have to see the Dutch context, Mein Kampf, uh, this terrible book of Adolf Hitler, is outlawed. I made a point in the Dutch Parliament that I said to all these liberal uh, politicians and socialist politicians in my own Parliament that, hey, you are very happy here and you applauded the fact that Mein Kampf was outlawed in the Netherlands. If you are really consistent, you should, for the same argument, that you use as liberal politicians to outlaw Mein Kampf, outlaw the Koran as well. Of course, it was very silent. They were not consistent and they um, um, shoved the problem under the carpet, which is exactly the point again, that we should be able to see Islam for what it is, make a distinction between the people and the ideology and, um, well, um, um, stop with being politically correct and address the problems as many people, also in Australia, see it when it comes to the Islamization right, of their country. Let's um, let's talk to you about uh, what you've said. You've called Islam the greatest sickness we've had during the last century. I take it that probably includes Nazism. Uh, you also say it has to be tackled and driven back. What do you mean by that exactly? How would you drive it back if you had the power? Well, you know, it's very simple. Um, I believe that we should stop the immigration, uh, the mass immigration from um, Islamic countries. And I believe that Muslims that are in our society today are, of course, um, equal as anybody else, as long as they adhere to our laws 
to our constitution, to our values. And as long as they cross this red line, if they commit crimes, if they start beating up women, if they start the genital mutilation, if they start to commit other uh, crimes and other killings, as they unfortunately do in Western Europe uh, many times, if they do that, I believe we should expel them the same day if possible from our country. So to stop the immigration to our societies, because we have had more than enough Islam in our societies, and people who are here and who are behaving according to our laws and our constitutions are um, um, happy to stay, um, are equal to anybody else, or even want to help them with a better education. But if they cross the line of crime, start acting according to Sharia law, there will be no place for them in our free societies. It's okay, very right, simple, no, I've got it's very to, clear, right, let me, and it has it, a lot yes, of support. It's not so simple because uh, the vast majority of crime committed, for example, by young Moroccans, and you do have a problem there, there's no doubting that, uh, committed by people who've been yeah. born in Holland. Are you suggesting stripping them of their citizenship? Doesn't matter. Say that again. Well, you know, um, um, in Holland, in Holland, Moroccans automatically also have the Moroccan nationality, even if they are born in the Netherlands, because the Moroccan law says that if one of the parents is Moroccan, the children, wherever they are born in the world, are Moroccan as well. So any of those Moroccan youth, and let me tell you that the Moroccan youth in the Netherlands between the age of 14 and 23, two-thirds of them have been arrested by the police um, at least once in their life. Two-thirds of the uh, young actually, Moroccans I, I, between I did, no, 14 I looked and at your department, it's, an, your department, it's an enormous problem. You, it is a big problem, but you're, you are exaggerating it because your Department of Interior Statistics say 40% no. in that age group, 40%, not two-thirds, no. which is 60%. No. Yes, that was, two, that was two years ago. That was two years ago. And if you would have looked at the latest report, you would see that it's more than 60% today. But the point is that since they are Moroccan and Dutch, if they commit crimes, if they commit serious crime, I'm not talking about driving through a red traffic light, but if they commit serious crimes, I believe we should strip them indeed of the Dutch nationality and send them back to Morocco, as Morocco does. Morocco, if you are a Morocco citizen with a dual nationality, no. if you commit a crime in Morocco, you are stripped of the Moroccan nationality and sent to your, other, to your own country. We can learn from them okay, in well, that uh, respect. Well, let's just clear this up then. Does that mean you would only strip Islamic criminals of their passports and their citizenship, or all criminals? who came from another country. For no, example, if, is, you, is, if you is, came from yes, Australia, you committed a crime, you were Dutch, but you had an Australian origin, you'd yeah. be sent back to Australia, would you? Is it all criminals or are you singling out Islamic criminals? No, that would be uh, ridiculous even for you to suggest I'm not a racist. So it would also go for Swedish people, for Australian people. But let me tell you, we have no problem in the Netherlands with Australian criminals or with Swedish criminals. We have a problem with, amongst others, Moroccan criminals. Of course, that would apply for anybody with any dual nationality. But the mere fact would be that in reality, because we have over-representation of um, um, often Moroccan people and other people from Islamic background in a crime, that they um, would be stripped of the Dutch nationality and sent away. I don't know what's wrong with it. If you commit a crime, you overstate your welcome. If I have guests in my house and if they, if they start um, 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 messing up my kitchen or st start getting a fire um, in my um, sleeping room, I would send them away. Well, this I mean, is I, can I just make the point? They're not, they're, not, guests, they're, not guests, they're not guests in your house. They are citizens in your country. That's a very different thing. They're not yeah. guest workers who just happen to be there. They're people who are Dutch citizens who've been born in your country. Well. Yeah, if you talk about Moroccans, indeed, they are also, besides the Moroccan okay, nationality, right, no, well, the Dutch nationality, but, right, we okay, also okay. Have, but we also have a lot of people who are not Dutch and who are here in Holland as a guest, uh, whether they are um, asylum seekers or others. And I believe if you commit a crime, you overstate, you're welcome if we could extradite you. Okay, let's go through some of your other uh, potential policies were you to gain more power yeah. than you currently have. So you've got a five-year moratorium, was what you originally said on migration from foreign countries. You're now, I believe, actually saying that should be from Islamic countries. Islamic migration should be banned. Isn't that against European rules? Well, I mean, um, I'm a politician. Um, um, I believe that we can change any rule uh, that is there. 
Uh, once again, um, we have an enormous support within uh, the Dutch um, uh, public. Uh, we, one million people voted for my party. We are number three, uh, and in the polls today, even number two party, the second biggest party of Holland. So we are not, as you said in your introduction, a far-right um, uh, party. If we would have been extreme, we would have got 0.01% of the vote. We got more than 10% of the vote. Why? Because we address the problems of so many Dutch citizens that are afraid to go out in the neighborhoods um, after 10 uh, p.m., who are afraid to send their children to school because all the harassment they get from this parallel Islamic society. And people are not extreme in Holland. We are one of the most, most tolerant society in the world. And in order to stay tolerant, my party believes that we should stop being tolerant to the people who are intolerant to us, and we should start being intolerant to the people who are intolerant to us. This is not more than logic. This is not extreme. This is common sense. Can I ask why it is the values, the, the solidarity of Dutch society is not strong enough to cope with the Islamic population of 6%? How can 6% overturn the values of your society? Well, like I said, it's not just a Dutch problem. I don't know if you've lately visited Europe, if you've been to the city of Malmö in Sweden, or to Berlin, or to Hamburg, or to London, or to Paris in the suburbs, or to Rotterdam in my own country. You see many cities where um, there is a city within a city, where even today in the United Kingdom, I don't know if you're aware of that, there are even Sharia courts active, where there is rulings that um, uh, the, 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 the worth of a woman is half of that of a man. Um, you see crime, and um, you see all the things happening, unfortunately, all over Europe uh, because of A, uh, the mass immigration, but B, also because of we, politicians, are not able to deal with it. We are politically correct and we are afraid to address the problem because if you address the problem like I do, people like you uh, call us um, um, either extreme or you're being taken to court or you will get death threats in your life. So there is a big disincentive to talk about the truth. But I will speak the truth. Okay, whatever right. people uh, call sorry, me, we're, we're, whatever we're, people uh, take uh, me to court. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I don't mean to interrupt you. Uh, we are sort of running out of time. And I want to get to a couple of other things. I mean, when you got yeah. the balance of power, um, the government, I think under your influence, basically got rid of multiculturalism in Holland, ended the concept of multiculturalism in Holland. We're about to have an election this year in Australia. Uh, the co there are yeah. senior figures in the coalition, that is the Conservative Party, who are seriously questioning multiculturalism in Australia. Will you be encouraging that debate when you come here? Well, you know, I'm, I, I don't want to get involved in uh, Australian politics. Uh, that's up to you. You are a democracy, and the Australian people should decide what they, uh, who they will vote for. And I'm not mingling or interfering in that at all. I just want to say that the multiculturalism, and especially the cultural relativism, which is even worse than multiculturalism, the concept that um, um, all cultures are equal, is the worst recipe for any um, 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 society. So yes, I believe that we should, like I said before, define who we are and in order to do that you have to know what you are not. And I'm proud to be a member of a society that is based, its values are based on Christianity, Judaism and humanism. And I never would live, like to live in a country that is that multicultural that, for instance, the Islamic values become more dominant. We should not do that. We should stop that. I'm not against other cultures, but I believe what the Germans call a light culture, a, a dominant culture that we should have, even in our constitution stated, what our dominant culture is and that our laws should apply to that culture and to no other one. Uh, finally, it's been reported that you're coming with your own personal protection team of uh, Dutch Secret Service. I don't know if that's true, uh, but if it is, I'm wondering what sort of reception you are expecting in Australia and are you worried uh, because there have been many threats to your life in Holland whether that could happen here yeah well I hope you understand that um, I'm always advised and I follow that advice never to talk about um, security issues so I cannot tell you who will be accompanying me and why because that would only uh, make me myself more vulnerable so I will not talk about that but yes indeed uh, I hope 
um, I'm a Democrat. I'm a democratical um, um, elected politician from the Netherlands representing one of the major parties in Holland that I will be able to talk and to discuss with people, not only people I agree with. It's very easy to talk to people you agree with, but also people you disagree with, um, maybe even um, Australian uh, politicians. Don't be afraid of me. I'm a lawmaker. I'm not a lawbreaker, and I'm just uh, telling the truth, and I want Australian, a country and a people that I respect very much. Any Dutchman knows the young Australians that fought for our freedom in the First and Second World War. I hope I can tell you what happened in Europe and support you in your fight to preserve freedom for your children and your grandchildren and tell them what I believe the Islamic threat is and to discuss it with anybody, also people who don't agree with me. This is democracy. This is civil society. We should cherish that. Very briefly before we go, you mentioned politicians there. Of course, you have had contact with uh, Senator Cory Bernardi of the Liberal Party. Do you intend to see him or other politicians when you're in the country? Well, I've met uh, Mr. Bernardi here in Holland. I believe um, you are in an election now. I believe it might be <laughs> more difficult for him to meet uh, me now. Um, I, I think he uh, doesn't intend to do that. I understand that this is politics. Um, the friend from yesterday uh, can have an argument not to see you uh, tomorrow. Uh, it's sad, but uh, true. But I'm open um, to meet any politician uh, in Australia, to meet any person. I think we can learn from one another. I believe I have an important message, uh, and we are fighting the same fight, which is the fight for freedom in Australia, in Holland, and in Europe. Uh, Hurt Builders, uh, it's a, a long discussion that needs to be had with you. We just had a, I think, small portion yeah. of it uh, here tonight. We thank you very much for taking the time to come and talk to us. It's my pleasure, sir, and I'm look, looking forward to meeting your country next week.